everybody loves a makeover, don't you think? From new hair to new clothes, new diet, or even a new room or house. We all love it when people, especially the ones on TV, take that risk and make a change for the better. And since each of us loves a makeover, we say maybe it's time to stop watching other people make that change and make over ourselves. Because no one else deserves that positive outlook and lifestyle change more than you. I'm Tereli Caros. I am Maggie Wilson, and this is Fit and Fab, your ultimate guide to being a better you. Reach for the sky. Dance to the beat. Yeah. Pamper yourself. Go all out. Yeah. Be fit. Be fit. Be fair. This is your time to be all that. Be fit. Ooh, be fair. This is your time. Tonight's Fit and Fab is a chock full of tips and treats that will help you make that positive lifestyle change. We've got body jam, tips on how to lose those post-baby pounds, a feature on eating healthy fast food, as well as a manners manual for those of you who need help when it comes to etiquette. So let's get the show started. I totally agree. Maggie, I heard you recently tried out body jam. No, actually, you know what? It's a workout and it was really, really fun because it combines music and dance. My favorite A workout while having fun. You know, I love to dance. Especially you Pinoy's out there, they also love to dance. And the interesting thing is, there were a lot of mommies and a lot of men who were also doing yeah. Oh. Okay, so before Maggie gives away everything else, let's watch her get her groove on in this high energy, high step dance workout. Body Jam is a cardio workout where you are free to enjoy the sensation of dance. The perfect workout for us rhythm-loving Filipinos. Filipinos have really this um, love for dancing. Sabi nga nila, Filipinos are the Latin America of Asia. So everybody here wants to dance. They love to dance. They wanted to express themselves. So, kaya hit na hit ang Body Jam. Set to the latest music and greatest dance moves, Body Jam is cardio fun at its best, especially for those with a passion for movement. You will burn calories, increase your fitness levels, and most importantly, learn to dance better. This 55-minute workout definitely puts the emphasis as much on having fun as breaking a sweat. As long as you're having fun, you wanted to have fun, you just want to reduce your stress, you, can def you are definitely in for a Body Jam class. The choreography here is actually very simple. You even get time to learn each new dance step. And with your instructor as your best buddy, he will definitely coach your style and direction and even motivate you to perform at your best. The body jam, you don't need a partner para mag work out. It's all about you, yourself. It's all about you because uh, you have to bond with yourself. You just have to express yourself. And secondly, pwede kang magkaroon ng alterations dun sa mga iba't ibang steps. Body Jam promises all the benefits of a cardiovascular exercise, even burning a lot of calories. Well, Body Jam, kasi it's a cardio-based dance or, um, workout. So the thing here is you lose pounds, you lose calories by having fun. Just to give you a testimonial, um, I was 210 before, and then I'm a member of Fitness First, and then eventually I became a group exercise instructor, and then I started trimming down through this program. Wow, but if that's not good enough proof that Body Jam really is an effective cardio workout, I asked Raven students about what they thought about this intense cardio dance class. How did you guys get into uh, Body Jam? Uh, me, I got in Body Jam because I love dancing. Um, any tips for like the beginners? The well, hi for the beginners. Just uh, join the, have a fun and just uh, dance with the <laughs> Don't hesitate to join. Just try it. Just try it and then they'll enjoy it? Yes, they will. <laughs> and right now, I am going to go try it out myself. I was really excited to try it because um, I found out that it's not really an aerobic class. It's more of a dance class. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be excited. Each body jam class starts with a series of warm-ups. The simple moves designed to work one body part at a time, from the shoulders to chest and then to the hips. 
From there, the class goes through some uncomplicated but exciting dance combinations that follow the latest music and hottest dance trends. During the body jump, well, since it was dancing, I was having fun. There were mommies, there were girls in the class, and um, I was very impressed that they were able to dance. So, um, I, you know, I thought to myself that if they can do it, then I bet I can do it too. It's hard to the leg, because it's like a little bit, it concentrates more on the leg. It's, the dance moves are very, very... Uh, bouncy, very movie. We run a lot, you know, we, we move a lot, especially with our legs. Tapos, may mga iba rin na for the hips. So, um, yeah, and I think it's a great workout for the legs mostly. And a great cardio workout as well. The pace slows briefly for a mid class recovery phase before the action builds again to a second sky high peak. It's actually fun. I recommend it more over than running the treadmill. That was so boring. And to complete the session, a nice, safe, groovy cool down to sort of close down the show. I really recommend that you guys try it. It's really fun. Lang ginawa ko dito bang tumawa habang tumatayo. Oh, see you next. I just have to say, Body Jam is such a fun, fun workout. You know why? Whatever music you're into, whether it may be hip hop, techno house, or salsa, pwedeng pwede ka don. Papa, ingit naman. Next time I go to the gym, I'm definitely trying out Body Jam. And to you ladies out there who like to go clubbing, dancing, why not try out Body Jam as well, right? Totally. And with that, Fin Fab will be right back. Losing your post-baby weight may seem like a daunting task, but guess what? It's not as hard as it sounds. Meet a couple of moms who've lost the postpartum pounds successfully the healthy way. Coming up next on Fit and Fab. And later, love your fast food but can't give it up? Well, you don't have to. Find out how. Stay tuned. It's easier to gain weight than it is to lose weight. That's why one of the best things about being an expectant mom is that you have the perfect excuse to eat more than your usual amount. You're eating for two. But what happens to those extra pounds that you gain after you give birth? Losing post-baby weight may seem daunting at first, but we meet a couple of fit and fab moms who lost their post-baby weight successfully. The healthy way, of course. Having a baby changes a woman's life forever. And new moms experience a different kind of joy when they see their little one's faces. Having a child also means changes in a woman's body. Unwanted post-pregnancy weight is an unwelcome change. One that new moms say they'd rather do without. Fit and Fab met some moms who say that though it may take some work, losing the post-pregnancy weight is possible. We've seen Susie and Trata Abrera change from being an active and sporty host to being a lively TV personality whose smile we wake up to on the morning show, Unang Hirit. We've also seen her go through all three of her pregnancies. Siguro ang average ko between 35 to 40 pounds for each pregnancy. Pero parang wala akong kabusugan. Hindi ako lugi sa buffet kasi for some odd reason, I could eat more when I was pregnant even though I had less space. Every time she gains the usual pregnancy weight, she seems to lose it right away just after giving birth, which is unusual for most. Her weight loss secret? Something that's actually good for her kids too. Breastfeeding. Original plan talaga, syempre for them. Parang manunotis mo lang after na, parang ang pumapayot niya ako ha, at wala akong ginagawa. Nasa bahay ka lang, tapos nagpapa-breastfeed ka lang. Naglulose ka na ng weight, so parang sobra siyang win-win situation. With her third child, Aside from breastfeeding, she also a lot of time to take spinning class, and she eventually shed the pounds. So that's twice a week, an hour, uh, twice a week. To Susie, losing the weight means she has more energy to keep up with her adorable growing children, Leona, Jaden, and Nella. Susie has gained and lost her post-pregnancy weight thrice, and is now a healthy mom to her three little angels. 
Denise's slim figure was part of her charm as a commercial model before. But when she got married and pregnant, the pounds began to creep up. I what to eat, uh, what vitamins to take, ano yung mga, yung mga fruits, mga vegetables, and syempre, I want to be sure na healthy yung baby ko. From a 100-pounder to a 135. When the weight built up and stayed even after giving birth, so did the blues. Denise says she experienced postpartum depression. Nagkaroon ako ng fat sa tummy, tapos tumaba yung face ko, tumaba yung mga arms ko, which is that yung payat-payat naman talaga, di ba? Siguro nadadepress ako because of my weight. Six months after giving birth, the busy new mom and businesswoman had to do something about her weight, not only for herself, but also for her family. First, she started to watch her diet. She ate less carbohydrates and more protein. To lose weight, Denise did a fun and sexy exercise for a couple of hours twice a week, belly dancing. Parang feeling mo sexy sexy mo. Parang you have the girl power, ganon. After more than a year of getting the right nutrition and doing enough exercise, Denise has lost 20 pounds of her post baby weight. to show the world that I'm back, I'm confident again, I'm happy with myself, and I love myself. Denise says her now slimmer figure helps her in feeling like a confident wife and new mommy. I want to be beautiful nga for my family and yung self-confidence na rin. I, yung, maintain ko ba yung self-confidence ko, yung self-esteem ko. Doctors say pregnant moms and those who just gave birth gain weight because of the physical and hormonal changes that a woman's body goes through. A weight gain during pregnancy comes from first, of course, the, the weight of the baby. Then secondly, the amniotic fluid. Um, then also, of course, the breast and the, the blood circulation. And at the same time, the excess fat that they gain because of you know too much eating. Dr. Cruz says breastfeeding, just like what Susie did, does help new mommies in losing the weight post-delivery. Studies have shown that breastfeeding promotes weight loss since milk production burns 200 to 500 calories a day. Breastfeeding after delivery is highly recommended because first and foremost, you transfer the immunity, the protection to your baby against infection. You encourage maternal bonding. And of course, but the last but not the least, is that you lose weight more easily. For significant weight loss, new moms should stick to having a balanced diet and doing the right amount of exercise. She says mothers who undergo a normal delivery may start exercising from six to eight weeks after giving birth. Those who had a cesarean section may start working out three months after delivery. Losing weight, staying fit, staying thin is a commitment. Fitness experts say new moms should work out thrice a week and the arms, thighs, and ab areas should be the focus of post-delivery exercises as these are the areas that usually change drastically during pregnancy. To get those shapely arms back, new moms will need 5-pound dumbbells and a bench to do tricep kickbacks. So hold on to the dumbbells, hold on to the floor, straight arm. The arm should be lever or slightly higher your arm, okay? And then from here, you just have to extend your elbows without changing your arm position. Inhale, going back. Exhale, as you go backwards. Okay, so you target your triceps, which is the most common area that sucks in the pregnant mom. A mat and an exercise ball are needed for the abdominal exercises. The basic crunch mostly works out the upper abs. So you have to sit on the ball and walk the feet forward as you lie down. Make sure your head is off the ball. So you, so you put your hand behind your head. You have to focus on the abdominals. Okay? When you go up, you're looking at the ceiling for easy as cue. And then you go up, exhale. The oblique curl targets those love handles. As you crunch, you're going to move sideways. And as you go up, exhale. The ball may also be used to do squats. Just put the ball against the wall and lean on it. Slowly bend your knees while keeping a straight back. When you're doing the squats, it's as if you are sitting on a blank chair. This one targets the front thighs, the back thighs, and the buttocks. 
Those who really want to strengthen their thighs may use a hip abduction adduction machine and lift 50 pounds to concentrate on the outer thighs. To tone the inner thighs, new moms may lift 25 pounds for resistance. Since we want to lose uh, weight or tone at least, you have to do more repetitions but moderate resistance. Together with a 30-minute cardio workout, these exercises should be done 15 to 20 times in two sets thrice a week. And in no time, the baby weight will come off. To new moms, losing the weight they gain during pregnancy may be daunting at first. But with the right exercise and the right diet and breastfeeding, the moms at Fit and Fab Med say that getting their old figure back is attainable because a healthy and fit mom gives them more of a chance to have a happy family life. We all love our fast food. That's why when it comes to eating healthy, it's so hard to give our fast food cravings up. We say you don't have to. Find out how up next on Fit and Fab. And later, how much do you know about basic etiquette? Bring out your fab side by minding your manners. Stay tuned. I don't know about you, Maggie, but I love fried chicken. Mm. Actually, naliligo sa gravy, sobra. Guilty as charged. I can't get enough of my chicken nuggets and my french fries. You know, I, I oh, probably oh. must eat about three to five times a week of fast food. It's terrible. I've saw three to five times a week, cholesterol mo But you know, di ba? But yeah, I know where you're coming from. And really, it's so much more convenient to just go and get fast food. That's right, but thankfully, there is a safe and healthy way for us to indulge in our favorite fast food habits. Watch this. In this fast-paced world where our schedules are getting busier by the minute, we want everything instant and quick, like our food. The way you define fast food is how they serve the food, not, not, not really the food itself. Yep, that's fast food as we like it. Fast, convenient, and cheap. Burgers, fries, spaghetti, fried chicken. Although they're not gourmet, they can fill our tummies and fill our busy schedules at the same time. My regular order? Hi, Ate. It's a cheeseburger meal. Large fries, chaha drink. The question is, is fast food good for us? Hindi healthy masyado kumain sa fast food. Pero ito yung pinaka-mabilis na pwede namin kainan. Meron naman tayo mga fast food na nagserve ng vegetables. Eating outside may increase our risks of obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, and these are the diet-related diseases. Well, the good thing about fast foods today is you, you can see that they're really actually making an effort to make their foods healthier. Wait a minute. It seems as if there are two sides to the issue. Before you head out to the nearest fast food joint, let's learn some important fast food facts. Nutritionists, dietitians, and health experts have always discouraged us from having a fast food diet. Foods served in fast food mostly are high in sugar, high in fats, low in, high less in fiber. So sometimes yung po yung nagiging problema natin later on. Even yung cholesterol din po, nakakoncentrate din po sa food that they are serving, especially on the meats. Because if for fast food, you really don't know what's inside the food itself and you don't know how it's prepared. Where, whereas like when you prepare it at home, you know exactly how much oil you used or how much salt you used. So most of the time, they're deep fried, like French fries, even the burgers, and the chicken. So a lot of oil really seeps into the products from fast foods. So what really goes on behind the fast food menu? This glass of oil is used to deep fry chicken to give it its crispy, juicy taste. It's also used to fry the burger patties that make up our hamburgers. As for our favorite greasy French fries, fact is, one potato fried in too much grease may lead to certain deadly diseases. These oils are generally more dangerous for your health. It promotes uh, cardiovascular diseases and predisposes you to obesity. Another dreaded ingredient of processed food is the salt. This comes from preservatives, extenders, and flavorings most fast foods put in their popular menu, like our favorite cheeseburger. A 
regular cheeseburger may have 820 milligrams of sodium. So does a large bag of fries. That's a lot considering our body needs only 1.2 grams of sodium every day to function properly. High salt content kasi is hard on your kidneys. Uh, kasi yun, yun nga, the kidneys filter your blood. And salt is one of the more potent solutes in the body. So yun nga, your body tends to uh, exert more effort in excreting it. For the Weight Watchers, one thing they're very conscious about is the calorie count. Calories aren't necessarily bad for us because they give us the energy that we need to move around. But too much of it make us fat or eventually obese. In an average male or female, we usually require 1,600 to 1,800 calories per day. If we will distribute it per meal, at least more or less 500 each meal. So if we're fond of eating outside, a certain burger may give you more or less 500 calories na. So if you, if you would add some drinks, so that's an added calories pa. But for fast food lovers like Caroline, these figures don't count. It's a part of my weekly routine, siguro mga twice a week na sa fast food ako. It's either I eat a full meal or um, mag take out na na, let's say, um, Sunday or a pie. And her favorite treat? My favorite food from a fast food chain is essentially um, yung chicken and spag meals nila and yung burger if I'm really in a rush. Though Caroline admits that her diet may be packed with tons and tons of calories, fats, sugar, bad cholesterol, salt and oil, she doesn't seem to mind. She claims to counterbalance harmful health effects by avoiding junk food at home. We took Caroline to a clinic to have her blood tested for any negative results her fast food diet may have cost her. Thankfully, results showed nothing for Caroline to be alarmed. Her cholesterol level is at 4.7 millimoles out of the normal 3.9 to 5.2. But not all Filipinos are as lucky. According to the 2004 National Nutrition and Health Survey, 4 out of 10 20 to 29 year old Filipinos are pre hypertensive and 12 million are obese. Seems like a doomsday scenario, doesn't it? But don't fret, if you are like Carolyn and can't live without fast food, nutritionists say that knowing your fast food limit will make your fast food habit a safe one. If there's no choice, let's choose. Po yung less greasy food, less sugar food, and uh, less flesh. Here are a few healthy tips to turn your fast food trip into a healthy one. For burger lovers like me, why don't we try eating grilled burgers instead of pan fried? Going grilled rather than fried can cut off the excess fats we get from unhealthy oil. And here, we can show how much oil really drips out of the burgers. It drips the really extra fats in the pan. Then, it's not just the same in the burger. When it's assembled, the number one flagship product is Whopper. There are a lot of same. Lettuce, tomato, onions. Also, it's best to look for fast foods that offer 100% pure beef. No preservatives, no extenders. Pag may preservatives na iba, so may mga chemical compounds na extenders na hindi natin alam kung ano laman, kami, pure na beef. Who can resist good old fried chicken? While chicken meat is good for you, it's the crispy part of it that is not. Chicken skin fried to a crisp is most likely loaded with oil and bad cholesterol. For chicken, nga, that's, that's, a good, that's a good suggestion to not eat the skin na lang. Nutritionists also suggest that it's better to go to fast food stores that give you control in what you eat. Everything that we serve is fresh. We bake our own bread. We don't use any grease or oil. Um, basically, we have a lot of vegetables. We load our sandwiches with a lot of vegetables. So the customers really have a choice of what they want inside their sandwich. Rather than just having your sandwich wrapped up, we, we show our customers what's inside their sandwich. The best part is your freedom of choice. You can tell their sandwich artists to put less meat. Put tuna instead of salami. Fill your sandwich with lettuce, onions, and tomatoes. Hold the salt 
and choose the right dressing so you can skip the mayo for healthier olive oil. Mayonnaise kasi is basically fat, so fat contains 9 calories per gram. Whereas opposed to carbohydrates, which contain 4 calories per gram lang. So you can see it's really times 2 more pa. So in our search for good finds in fast foods, we realize that we don't have to say goodbye to our fast food treats after all. Being aware of the possible health risks is crucial. And remember, being fit is not just about eating. It's about making the right lifestyle choices. It's really all about balance. If you eat fast food long for siguro once or twice a week, it won't be very bad for you. As long as the other foods you eat are healthy, healthy foods also. Or you know, if you exercise and then you can keep the weight off to avoid being obese. My fast food journey has taught me that like everything else, too much is always bad for me. We should be in control of our food and not the other way around. Happy and healthy eating! Up next on Fit and Fab, how much do you know about basic etiquette? Bring out your fab side by minding your manners. And later, the latest treatments to get rid of those pesky pimples and skin acne. Stay tuned! Don't you just love those gossip magazines where they have pictures of celebrities that are eating with no boys? Flashing someone. Exactly. You know, it is very important for us to know good manners. Exactly. You don't know who's watching, you don't know whose camera is rolling, who's taking a photo of you. That's right. So whether it may be, you know, just eating with your friends or getting out of the car, or even just simply shaking somebody's hand, it's very, very important for us to know our manners. When you hear the word manners, what is the first thing that comes to mind? A list of don'ts. Don't eat when your mouth is full, don't put your elbows on the table, don't do this and don't do that. So, you think you know everything there is to know about good manners? Well, I don't think so. It's great to see you. Welcome to JRP. Thank you. That's why we sought some etiquette expertise from John Robert Paris to give us the lowdown on what and what not to do in certain social situations. First things first, different cultures have their own norms and social etiquette. And since we live in a fusion of different cultures, it wouldn't hurt if we learn and adapt some manners from other countries. The basic thing that you have to know whenever you travel is the basic greeting and introductions in the country that you're attending. So there are certain countries where when you greet, it's through a handshake. In Asian countries, our handshake is actually more gentle and less firm compared to North American and European countries. In introducing two people to each other in a social situation, you have to observe which person has more honor. For example, between a man and a woman, it would be a woman that has more honor than a man. You will always present a younger person to the older person. So between both of them, she is the older person here, so you use her name first. So for example, Christina, I would like to introduce to you one of my students in John Robert Powers. This is Regine Caldine. Regine, this is one of my dear friends, Christina Makatulan. When you do the handshake, make sure you touch the web of the hands of the other person before you close your hand and shake. And the firmer it is, the better. No one likes a limp handshake, right? They say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. But bad table manners could ruin your chances no matter how delicious the meal was. I'll be teaching you today is the six course uh, table setting. So when you say six courses, it means that you'll be eating six different kinds of meals. Yup, six courses, from appetizers, to soup, to salad, to fish or meat, to main, to dessert. Whew, that's a lot of food. And that requires a lot of utensils. But don't get intimidated. Remember to relax, project confidence, and start from the outside going in. I want you to remember BMW, as in bread and butter, your meal or your main course, and your water and wine. So that's something easy for everybody to remember. Or you can do this. Bread and butter, drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that you will not steal your neighbor's glasses. Okay. okay, so let's pretend. We have the American style and the continental style of dining. First of all, the American style of dining. Pierce the food, okay, and you can slice or you can just fold the leaves, okay, and then you pierce it with the fork. 
American style, you have to rest the knife at the corner of the plate, just like that. Yep. Okay. Transfer the fork on the other hand and eat. Pines up. Mm. The continental style would be pierce your fork, uh, pierce your food to the fork, slice, 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 and put it directly to your mouth. It's actually more refined if you ask me. So let's begin with your cocktail or your appetizers. So you can use your cocktail fork and just eat probably, uh, let's, it's mussels. Okay, baked mussels, ayan. Yummy, 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 yummy. Okay, and let's pretend you're done. Just rest it in the four o'clock position. Always scoop the soup away from you. Away from you. This is to avoid any kind of accidents like spilling on your dress, right? So it's always away from you. Now when you're done, there are two things that you have to remember. If it's a deep bowl like this one, you put the soup spoon beside it. There you go, on the under plate. Sometimes they serve you in these kinds of bowls. It's shallow, so when you're finished, you just put it on the soup bowl. Just like that. Our next course would be your salad course. And it's up to you if you want to choose American or continental style of dining. Take note of the fish knife. It's got a, it's looks like a weapon. <laughs> exactly. But it's actually for the bones of the fish, so you can remove it. Remove them easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. If you must leave the table or take a breather from your food, Remember that your fork should be at 8 o'clock and your knife at 4 o'clock position with the blade inwards. This is the continental style, whereas for the American style, just place your knife at the edge of the plate, then put your fork down at 4 o'clock position. This is just to let the waiter know that your plate shouldn't be taken away just yet. When finished with your meal, place your knife and fork at the 4 o'clock position, knife blade facing in and the tines of the fork down. For the continental style, tines facing up signals that you're done. And before we leave the table manners, let's not forget that other utensil used for a certain type of cuisine. To those of you who like to eat Japanese food, did you know that there's also a chopstick etiquette? Chopsticks must always be held in the correct manner. It should be held between the thumb and fingers of the right hand. Never wave your chopsticks around as if they were an extension of your hand gestures. Bang them like drumsticks or use them to move bowls or plates. Chopsticks can be rested horizontally on one's plate or bowl to keep them off the table entirely. A chopstick rest can also be used to keep the points off the table. Knowing your table manners is not enough. Show appreciation to good service and be polite to the waiters. Usually in, uh, in any Western country or in North America and even European countries, they practice 10% tip. So 10% of, of the food and the beverage that you consume, that would be your tip. Uh, but here in our country, we have service charge. So I think that will really depend on you. If you feel that the service charge is enough as your tip, that would be okay. But if you want to add more, that's something that you can consider as well. But basic a rule would be a 10% tip. Etiquette is not just table manners, because every day, everywhere, we are expected to be graceful and respectful, not just of yourself, but also for the people around you. If you feel the need to freshen up, go to the restroom and don't powder your nose in public. Fixing yourself in public could be distracting and offensive to some people. In the ladies' room, you can be kikai as much as you want. And to avoid those embarrassing paparazzi getting out of the car moments? And when you're getting in the car, for a woman wearing a skirt, the ideal rule would be face the quarter direction or quarter angle direction of the car, and then you have to sit your butt first in the car and then bring both feet in. If you are wearing pants, the proper way would be step, body, step. Another important thing Filipinos should practice is the proper way of turning down invites. If you get an invitation and it says RSVP, RSVP means please respond in English. You have to respond whether you're coming or not. And if there are invitations where it says rejections only, it means you only call them if you're not coming. Learning social graces has no age limit, but for us young women, it can be very beneficial. But I learned to be more refined and confident after my social graces class here in John Norwood Powers. Actually, 85% of the success of a person uh, is all because of people's skills and only 15% comes from the technical skills and knowledge. That's why social graces is something very, very important to know because it's a big part of people's skills. 
get rid of pimples and acne with the latest skin treatments. Coming up next on Fit and Fab. Tonight's Q&A comes from Michike, one of our Fit and Fab viewers. She writes, Hi Fit and Fab, can you suggest something to help get rid of pimples? Well, Michi, you are definitely not alone. Pimples and acne, I mean, who doesn't get them, right? And thanks to our Fit and Fab experts, hopefully with their answer to your question, we won't ever get them again. Ever. ever. At times, something as minor as a pimple emergency is enough to ruin an otherwise great day. Since our faces are the first thing people notice, having acne can be quite a pain. Acne is a general term. Pwede siyang blackheads or comedones na tinatawag, pwede siyang yung pimples na may nana, yung parang may pus, di ba? Tsaka pwede siyang yung malalaki na masasakit na cystic lesions. Pwede siyang jeans. It could be hereditary. Some products that we put on our face can also cause acne. Sometimes in your diet also, although yeah, scientifically, it's not proven that it could cause acne. However, um, these days, no, because of the chips that we eat, that's high in fat, because everything's prito, because of all the mga peanuts and chocolates that we take, all these teenagers develop more acne when they're all puyat because of studying, because of work, because of those graveyard shifts. No, they their oil glands are more active and secrete more oil. When there's classes the next day, I don't really sleep early because I have schoolwork. When I don't sleep, then that's when I get a pimple. When I get stressed from work um, or when I sleep late, and generally when I'm not happy, I, I my skin breaks out. Hmm, work, junk food, and late nights? Kinda hard to avoid, right? But then again, clear skin is rarely achieved without effort. I'm a working mom, so it's really hard to keep up with a routine, much less a skin regimen. So I just um, wash my face whenever I get the chance, and I rarely wear makeup. If you're using a product in a month's time, and then you develop blackheads, pimples, better stop it, because it's probably that which is causing it. Um, usually, I get pimples around this area, so I think it's because I eat salty foods, and. Um, it's with the toothpaste I use. And when there's really no way of avoiding them, there are natural and quick ways of zapping those zits away. There are stuff you'll find at home that you can actually apply on your skin in case of a breakout. Some of these are honey mixed with cinnamon powder, papaya, fresh tomatoes, and lemon mixed with milk, which help cleanse, exfoliate, and moisturize your skin naturally. Take note though, some DIY pimple remedies work better for some than others. It is still best to visit your dermatologist who can further explain your condition and prescribe the right products especially for your skin. It's too late if you're, if you're already old and pangit na skin mo to start getting beautiful skin. You have to start preventive palang cleanse, tone and moisturize. Everybody from either um, uh, normal, dry, oily skin, and um, I think it's important to wash your face before you go to sleep, especially after yung gimmicks. Once you go out, you have makeup on, never sleep without cleaning your face. You have to what, get eight hours of sleep. Water is very important. You now you have to drink lots of water and eat the right kind of food. Now, adequate exercise. When we exercise, we increase the oxidation of the cells in our skin. You detoxify the skin. Why? Because the basa sweat na release yung mga toxin. And whatever you do, don't pop that zit. You wouldn't want your face to get scars and infections. Keep in mind these skincare tips so that you can break free from breakouts. Yes, that total lifestyle makeover is hard, so do it gradually. <laughs> Baby steps may take longer, but we'll still get you towards that fit and fab finish line. That's right, and if any of you guys have any questions or suggestions on how we can all make ourselves over, please write to us at fitandfab at jmanetwork.com. Thank you guys to those of you who have written to us, and to those who haven't yet, please drop us a line. We love hearing from you guys. Once again, I am Maggie Wilson. And I'm Therale Karos. We'll see you again next week on our new time slot, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Only here on... Fit and Fab!
Since 